Hello everybody. In this video, we will cover chapter 22, uh, the respiratory system, and this is video lecture part 1. Chapter 2 is divided into two parts. The function of the respiratory system. Major function of respiratory system is supply body with oxygen for cellular respiration and dispose carbon dioxide, a waste product of cellular dis uh, respiration and also function in all faction and speech. Um, so you guys know that cellular respiration is needed for ATP synthesis, and ATP is an energy molecule. So every single cell of your body needs ATP to do its cellular work, and to synthesize ATP, your cells need oxygen. And that's why your respiratory system will supply your body with oxygen. And also waste product of the cellular respiration, carbon dioxide, need to be removed from your cells, from your tissues. So that's what your respiratory system will do. And olfaction is ability to smell and you know what speech is, right? So that's the major functions. Respiration. So when you hear word respiration, that means that we will talk about gas exchange. So respiration is exchange, right? Uh, your cells will um, get oxygen and they will remove carbon dioxide, right? So respiration involves both respiratory and circulatory system. And um, there's a processes that supply your body with oxygen and dispose of carbon dioxide. Now here you can see why do we need both respiratory and circulatory system. Because a respiratory system will pretty much include your um, ventilation, pulmonary ventilation or breathing. And this is the movement of air into and out of the lungs. And then we have external respiration. And this is exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So again, I'm going to repeat respiration means that oxygen and carbon dioxide will move from one structure to another structure. If it's external respiration, then oxygen from your lungs will move to your blood and carbon dioxide from the blood will move to the lungs, right? That's respiratory system. But you don't need oxygen just in your lungs, in those alveoli. You need to deliver this oxygen to every single cell of your body. And that's why we need circulatory system to do it. So circulatory system will transport oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood. And then we have internal respiration and again, it will involve movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide. But this time, oxygen from your blood, right, will move to the tissues and carbon dioxide from your tissue will move to your blood, to your bloodstream. And then your circulatory system, your blood vessels will deliver this blood rich in carbon dioxide to your lungs so you can get rid of this carbon dioxide. So functional anatomy of the respiratory system. So the major organs include your nose, nasal cavity, paranasal sinuses, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi in their branches, lungs, and alveoli. When we talk about functional anatomy, we can divide your respiratory tract into respiratory zone and conducting zone. And conducting zone, it just conducts uh, gas, right? Uh, and it does not include exchange of the gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide right? Respiratory zone. This is where you have gas exchange. And respiratory zone will include 
respiratory bronchioles, alveolar duct, and alveoli. And everything else will be part of the conducting zone. You also have respiratory muscles. One of these muscles is a diaphragm, and also you have external, internal, intercostal muscles, and they promote ventilation. Also, if you look at this diagram over here, you can see that your conducting zone can be divided into upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract. And upper respiratory tract will include your nasal cavity, the pharynx, and larynx. So in everyday language, we use, instead of pharynx, we use throat. And instead of larynx, we use a voice box, right? But that's anatomical names. And low respiratory tract will include trachea, primary bronchi, and lungs. So we're going to start with the nose. Function of the nose is provide airway for respiration. Also, inside your nose, entering air became moist and warm. Also, your nose filters and cleans inspired air, serves as a resonating chamber for speech. And inside the nose, in the nasal cavity, you will find olfactory receptors, and those are smell receptors. So if you look at, um, at the nose, we have external nose, right? So external nose will include root right here with a bridge, also apex. So here's the apex. And um, we also have this external nares. So that's part is called external nares and ala. Ala is this um, tissue that <clears throat> kind of surrounding your external nares. So you can see that your nose is made from nasal bones. So here's two nasal bones. And then we have cartilage, cartilage of the nose, right? And then we have um, fibrous connective tissue that makes this ala. And we have nasal cavity. So we have external nose and nasal cavity. Nasal cavity is in and posterior to the external nose. It's divided by a midline nasal septum. So you do have nasal septum that divides the nasal cavity into two cavities, right and left. Posterior, um, we have some openings that we call posterior aperture. Uh, roof of the nose is asthmoid and sphenoid bones. And floor of the nose is a hard and a soft palate. I'm sorry, not the nose, but nasal cavity. Nasal cavity. So let's look at this diagram here. So here's your external nose, right? Here are your external nares. And then we have nasal cavity. Right? Now, um, so that's the, the root of the nasal cavity. Sorry. Right, so that bone over here, this is part of the asthmoid bone, right here. And this part over here, this is part of the sphenoid bone. And the floor is this part that is called hard palate, and this part called soft palate, and this is some tissue here called uvula. So inside the nasal cavity, you have a vestibule, right? So vestibule is pretty much right here, right? So that's a vestibule. And then um, you have covering of the nasal cavity called olfactory mucosa, and um, it's lined 
lines superior nasal cavity and contains smell receptors. So respiratory mucosa. Respiratory mucosa that cover your nasal cavity is made of pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. It contains mucus. It also contains lysosome and uh, defenses its a special um, molecules. You, because it's ciliated, you have the cilia, right? And cilia is for movement. So cilia move contaminated mucus posteriorly to the throat, and then you swallow this mucus with some microorganism or some debris that can be found in the air. So your mucus traps it, uh, cilia move it towards your throat, and you swallow it to your stomach where you have uh, your hydro hydrochloric acid. So you pretty much uh, get rid of all these debris and microorganisms. Um, also, the air that you inspire, it became warm in your nasal cavity because you have plexuses of capillaries and veins and uh, sensory uh, receptors triggers um, trigger your sneezing, you know, if you, if you get something in your nasal cavity that you need to get rid of. So on this diagram, you can see our pseudostratified right here, pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium, right? And uh, you can see goblet cells that produce mucin that became a mucus, and mucus will be like this layer on the top of your epithelium. Okay, so also if you look at the bony structure of the nasal cavity, inside the nasal cavity you will see this structure. This one, this one, and this, shown here in green. And those are called nasal concha. Here's a name. Right, so those are protuberance from the lateral wall, and they increase mucosal area and um, also enhance air tuberance. Um, actually, um, the concha, it creates turbulence of the air, and that helps you to trap bacteria in the mucus, um, the ones that you later will swallow. Right, so this concha on the top, this one, is called superior nasal concha, middle na nasal concha, and inferior nasal concha. Inferior nasal concha in it's its own bone, and we will talk about it when we cover skeletal system. This superior and uh, middle nasal concha, they part of the asmoid bone. Okay, so here is the function of the nasal mucosa and concha. During inhalation, the concha and nasal mucosa filter heat and moisten the air. During exhalation, this structure reclaim heat and moisture. Paranasal sinuses. Paranasal sinuses are a space inside some bones, and specifically frontal, sphenoid, asmoid, and maxillary bones. So you can see these cavities here, right? This one, this. And this shown in green, right? And also over here, you have sphenoid sinus. And they lighten your skin, oh, sorry, lighten your skull and help to warm and moisten the air. Okay, so pharynx. Pharynx is the muscular tube that connects your nasal cavity and your oral cavity to the larynx and esophagus. And it runs from the base of the skull to the level of the six vertebral uh, cervical vertebra. So pharynx, we call pharynx um, your throat, right? So, okay, so let's look on this picture, right? So here's your pharynx right there. Right, and um, 
That's the nasal cavity. That's the oral cavity. This is your tongue. And if you look at the pharynx, pharynx is divided into um, three parts. See this red part over here? And then we have light blue right there. And then we have kind of like dark blue over here, right? So the part of the pharynx that is posterior to the nasal cavity, so here's the nasal cavity. So that's posterior to the nasal cavity. It's nasopharynx. That's your oral cavity here. The one that's posterior to the oral cavity, right? That's your aura pharynx. And um, this cartilage over here, this cartilage is called epiglottis. And posterior to epiglottis, we have laryngopharynx. So that's the larynx anteriorly, and this is esophagus posteriorly. Also, um, I'm going to remove this. So now look, guys, um, when you eat your food, right, you form the bolus over here or you drink the water, it actually moves through this area, right, through the oropharynx. So your both digestive system and respiratory system share this part, oropharynx. But now when your food moving down, you don't want it to go inside your larynx, right? You don't want it. You want it. Uh, this ball is to go inside the esophagus. That's why this epiglottis, um, epiglottis bands, right? So over here. So this epiglottis, it bends and it closing your larynx. So all your food and water can only move to the right tube that is esophagus. Okay, so nasopharynx. Nasopharynx is posterior to nasal cavity, and it's lined by pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Uh, and inside your nasal pharynx, you have pharyngeal tonsils or adenoids. Oropharynx. Oropharynx passages for both food and air, right? And oropharynx lined by stratified squamous. So not pseudostratified, but stratified squamous epithelium. And in the oropharynx, you have palatine tonsils. Also on the surface of the tongue, you have lingual tonsils. Tonsils are part of the lymphatic system and they protect you from microorganisms, from bacteria, from viruses entering your oral and nasal cavity. Laryngopharynx, um, posterior to the upright epiglottis, right, and um, it extends to the larynx, uh, where it's also continuous with the esophagus. Right? So larynx, larynx is your voice box, right, and it's continuous with trachea, and um, functions of the larynx provide uh, pattern airway, root your air and food into proper chambers, and voice production. So larynx has a total of nine cartilages. The biggest one is the thyroid cartilage, and this is what we call Adam's apple. <clears throat> we also have ring-shaped cartilage, and we call it cricoid cartilage. Um, these two cartilages are hyaline cartilage, and then we have epiglottis, and epiglottis is elastic cartilage, and this is the one that covers your laryngeal inlet or laryngeal opening during swallowing. So over here on this diagram, you can see that's the biggest thyroid cartilage, and this would be your Adam's apple. This is cricoid cartilage. This is cartilages of the trachea. And here's our epiglottis. This is sagittal view. And in the sagittal view, also you see this epiglottis that will bend. It will bend, right, when you swallow uh, food. 
Uh, also on this view, I want you to see that we have actually what we call the faults, right? We have these faults and it's called false vocal cords. And this one is called true vocal cords. So true vocal cords, another name is vocal fold. So fold or cord, that's the same. Is it vocal cord or vocal fold, right? So that's our true, over here, true vocal cord. And that's important in the voice production. Right, so a vocal ligaments attached to a retinoid cartilage uh, to the thyroid cartilage contains elastic fibers and when your air passes through uh, between this uh, vocal ligaments this is how you produce sound and this opening between vocal ligaments is called glottis so over here you can see actually like a glottis so glottis is this opening right so here's will be our glottis right here and um, and this is our true vocal cords shown here in white right so when air passes through it vibrates your vocal folds and that's what produce your sound now the superior vocal folds superior vocal folds they are not a part of the sound production So voice, voice production. So your voice, you have your pitch and you have your loudness, right? So pitch is determined by the length and tension of the vocal cords and loudness determined by the force of the air. So you increase the force of the air, you increase the loudness or you decrease the loudness. And pitch uh, depends on what is the tension of vocal cords. So your pitch can go very high or very low, right? And also to talk, you also need muscles of your tongue, right? Your pharynx, your lips, your palate. Trachea. So trachea is from larynx into the mediastinum and then trachea connects to a respiratory tree. So it connects to primary bronchi and then to respiratory tree. So trachea wall, trachea wall has three layers, mucosa, submucosa, and adventitia. And mucosa is the same respiratory epithelium, ciliated pseudostratified epithelium with goblet cells, Submucosa is connective tissue and it has some um, serum mucus gland, so produce serum and mucus. And adventitia is the outer layer of connective tissue that has C-shaped rings of the hyaline cartilage. And those C-shaped rings, they keep your trachea open all the time because you don't want a trachea to collapse. Okay, so continue with the structure of the trachea. So posteriorly, we have a trachealis muscle and it connects posterior parts of these C-shaped cartilage rings. And trachealis muscle uh, contracts during coughing. And the last cartilage of the trachea is called carina. Right, and this is where trachea branches into two primary bronchi. Okay, so on this diagram, you can see esophagus, posteriorly, trachea, anteriorly, right? You can see this trachealis muscle over here. And um, in the trachea, this internal layer is submucosa, and it has this cilia, so it's ciliated, pseudostratified, ciliated epithelium. Then we have this submucosa, right, this part, these glands serum mucus glands and its connective tissue. And then adventitia is all this part that has this blue, blue part is a uh, hyaline cartilage C-shaped ring, right? And the function of this ring is to keep trachea open all the time. And uh, the function of this muscle, uh, not only in coughing, 
but also for esophagus to be able to um, expand if you swallow large piece of food, right? We don't want you don't want to accidentally damage this cartilage. So because we have muscle over here, we can expand the esophagus. Uh, this is histological slide of the trachea. So you can see that's a that's a mucosa. Right here's our epithelium, and this is a lamina propria, that areola connective tissue. And this is submucosa with the glands. And this is our adventitia with the hyaline cartilage. Um, and then is your trachea. That's our last slide in this part. That's your trachea. This is carina, the last cartilage. And then trachea branches into right and left. Primary, primary, primary bronchi. Right, and then those primary bronchi divides into secondary bronchi. Three, oh, I'm sorry, two over here and three over here. Right, secondary bronchi, and then they became smaller, so they became tertiary bronchi, and then bronchioles. And we have 23 orders of divisions, and all this branching pattern is called bronchial or respiratory tree. Okay, so that's it for the first part.